<laughs> yeah, we're it's uh, getting ready to get us going any moment now. Um, and I will so just wait till this thing boots up. All right. Well, looks like we are live. And uh, so um, as I explained earlier, I'm going to go ahead and just give the bio, uh, the bio out again, because some people may actually clicked on this from a, probably from the website or some other location. So uh, Trudy Masson is from the Netherlands and uh, she recalls memories of SRI monarch programming. She was used as a sex slave by royals and bankers and religious leaders. Throughout her lifetime, she was subject to Fourth Reich trauma mind control programming, and we can go into some of that in just a bit, as well as her connections to the Draco reptilian experimentations. Today, she will share some of her life experiences of how she endured this trauma as a testimony to others who suffer in silence. And of course, I got her contact email in there. And by the way, everybody, I'm James Rink. Thank you for coming on here in Super Soldier Talk. Uh, if you were going around the internet, clicking on different links and wondering what exactly you wanted to watch right now, uh, you've come to the right place because this should be a really fascinating story. I thank you, Trudy, for coming on here as well as being where, being willing to share this um, information because I know a lot of this is very traumatic. And uh, usually when you go through PTSD, uh, well, I mean, there's that fight, flight and flight, fight and flight scenario where some people want to fight, some want to flight. So I guess in you, your case, it looks like you are a fighter. Um, you certainly are survived all this. So um, why don't you go ahead and of course, um, thank you, by the way, thank you audience members uh, in the chat. I see you. Thank you all for coming in here. And uh, so uh, why don't you just go ahead and start from the beginning. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah. Well, thank you, James, for let, having me in your show and your YouTube. And I thank all the people who are willing to listen because this is also a very big problem. We must never forget because we are trained in certain ways during uh, childhood and by politics and everything that is going on. And our brains also have not only this fight and uh, flight reaction, but there is also some pain reactions in the mind. That if you hear anything that you think, this is so crazy, this is not able to happen, this can't be happening anyhow, uh, and then you start discovering this still happens, you get this pain reaction. So for people, for wanting to listen already is a big step. So I admire everybody who takes the time and who wants to share this information because it's not about me. It is about mankind. And I know that about abductions, nearly four millions of people got abducted from World War II on. So, and I'm just one of them. And I'm just one who is saying, well, this must stop. This is time that we get back to our normal life. I start feeling nervous, so it's not a problem. I just continue. Shall I start with my use? What, you, what do you want? Uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, so as far as maybe we just start from your childhood. So um, you typically SRA abuse begins in early childhood. Some at times it even begins in vitro. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm not necessarily going to quiz you on whether what you, what you remember from that. I but don't know. Probably go back from the beginning. Yeah, so like um, what is that? Well, let me tell me that my childhood never showed anything about what happened to me. It, in fact, it never well, when I think back, I can see on my reactions, how I reacted on certain situations that there must have been this trauma inside of me. But in my childhood, it was a very privileged way of living. We had these beautiful greenhouses with flowers and vegetables and uh, fruit trees and chickens. And we had lots of place to, to play and we were allowed to do the piano and the ballet and go to the museum and to the concerts, classicals and anything. So it was a wonderful time. And I was allowed to do my studies. So I became teacher of French and Dutch, although I was not good for the profession. <laughs> I was not able to uh, get, you know, I was too young. And uh, so it doesn't matter. So I left that. 
and then um, I lived in Austria also a while and somehow when I came back to Holland I caught a series of accidents and that was from 1997. I think this is important because it changes timelines all the time, eh, you know, and um, I got so ill and it was so bad. I had to lay in complete darkness for many years and I couldn't walk at all. And the doctors never gave me the right diagnosis. And that is why, in fact, my search started because I just simply wanted to know what is happening with me, what is going on. So, and then I met this wonderful people, Toos Nijenhuis and Kasper Rutten. They also have YouTube uh, films in English, so you can put it on your site, uh, James. And they helped me and they started the regressions with me because she was helping with my uh, vertebrae because of the accidents. And um, then she was doing a control point on my toe. I still remember that <laughs> because I shouted, ah, it feels like a needle stuck under it. And as they are both professional uh, healers and they are professional uh, trauma uh, uh, in the knowledge and regression therapists, they could help me to see the situations. And that is important because uh, then all the memories came back and I started to see what was happening. And um, I was a child from about three, four years old when this started. It started when I was uh, three. And this situation, shall I de describe this? Is this a good idea? Oh, when I describe yeah. just yeah. the details? Okay, so let's recap. All right, so yeah. it sounds like... Uh, you went throughout your childhood, and then when you started having these accidents, you you, you received some some assistance, but you don't you didn't necessarily remember all the trauma. You, I, I'm assuming maybe throughout your childhood it seemed like um, maybe I wouldn't say normal, but um, seemed like from from your perspective, did it seem like there was a lot of missing memories? Like yeah, like I never huge, yeah. it was like a I, cloud. I I never could remember the things that were going on. And that is typical for a trauma-based mind control, uh, I discovered later. But always people were telling, oh, I have such a good time at school. It was just blank. I was just blank slated. I think I was just blank slated all of the time of my life, many, many times. And that's why I still remember my childhood so good, because it was a, a bind uh, uh, to the emotions of the feelings that this was such a great time for me, being on the uh, the, the greenhouses and the fruit trees and, 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 and chickens and so on, as I love nature. So this was connected to my emotions. And this is a part I didn't forget, but I forgot a lot of my childhood. I forgot a lot of my study time. I forgot a lot of the people I met. I just forgot. And there was something else going on. I had, uh, I was a sex slave of these elites, but the uh, controllers of the matrix, they control your human life also. So I had this three double program that at daytime, I was in this Roman Catholic church uh, education for how oh, the body is evil and you must uh, not have uh, contact to your body and this kind of crap. And uh, at nighttime, I was a sex slave. And then during my whole life, I got uh, so, such a lot of range of sexual abuse that is really not normal. But as I was the sex slave, long time, I didn't imagine this wasn't normal. So this, the programming of the monarch uh, control and anything gets so deeply infiltrated in your normal human life that you don't see things happening that they are abnormal that is, is just crazy well and this is what I all started to discover thanks to Toast and Casper who are lovely people I love them so much and they are so great people and they had such big big problems themselves and she discovered herself the satanic rituals she has been in from the Illuminati family where she is coming from 
And, um, and we discovered that I was nearly in the same programs as she was. So there's lots of what she's telling, I don't have to tell anymore. Just take a look at her films and you know, and it is very essential that people know that this is happening and it is still going on, you know, with the, the, the child pornography and the child tra trafficking and the adrenochrome and anything and the satanic rituals. And they didn't ever, never, ever stop. And uh, I think what can we do? I don't know. I think we must tell in the open that people know because everything that is hidden, we can't change. And that we see, we can change. That is what I think. So, well, um, Trudy, yeah. Trudy yeah. I have a question. Um, so, would you consider yourself from uh, Illuminati family bloodline? Um, well, this is a difficult question because I don't know sure. I know that some things happen that are very crazy. And I know that people like you and me have uh, many experiences. But normal people you meet at the streets can be uh, uh, an Anunnaki or they can be uh, draconian. And I won't say my parents are like that. But, uh, somebody told me that perhaps my, uh, some in my family, and I won't mention who, some in my family are perhaps connected to the Anunnaki and that some of them are also perhaps connected to the Nazis. And that could be possible, but I won't blame anything and nobody, but anyhow, uh, I have no contact mm -hmm. with my family due to this uh, film I made myself. I okay. made film in Dutch. Well well, typically, if you're involved in these these projects, you probably are, have, at least from a bloodline, that doesn't necessarily mean you're from the, the elite class, or maybe maybe uh, there was a connection through another lifetime or whatnot. But um, without good, you know, you know, we don't necessarily need to go down that direction. But what I would like to know is about your own, your family. Um, how do they treat you as a child? Or because or, I know you, you said you started getting some memories back back um can you explain yeah that, that is this? very important because in general this was a loving, loving family but i was the, the the weird duck in the family you know i didn't belong there and i as a child i never could see my parents as my parents as a child i thought ah, i don't belong here and uh you know i i was i was a very psychic as a child and I was telling everything about people around me and they didn't like it at all. And I was very connected to nature. So I could see the nature uh, spirits also. And I played with them and I talked to them. So I was just this crazy child that were, was seeing things and was talking things. And well, uh, as a matter of fact, when I be honest, um, I had also many problems in getting accepted and being myself and being just a normal person I am because I fell out of the range. I fell out of the line. I'm not in the same line as they are. And that is something that is still keeping uh, me busy because I was thinking, well, you know, they have some ways of doing my family and I they are very lovely persons so let me put this right but I, I think differently I feel differently it, it was just strange for me some things well could could you explain a little bit like, I'm assuming first of all when we, when you describe being like that you weren't even related to them that seems um, um, synonymous with project surrogate which is where they insert uh, people that um, are more most likely been created into into a put into a clone body a soul that they a special soul that they want to control um into a family that is traumatic and abusive to control this particular soul usually it's like a, a, some kind of powerful light worker someone who was uh done something in a past life that was able to change the the trajectory the timeline to more positive so um if that's the case and you are part of project surrogate um, tell me a little bit more about um, so the, the yeah. SRA component of all. Was it your yeah, family that was doing this to you, or was it, were you being for, 
hold on. I know you're about ready to jump into it. One, one last point I want to go into this is in SRA, um, like I think a Sal, Salvi, I think that's another SRA experiencer. She described um, being taken away at night, uh, being triggered around maybe around two o'clock in the morning. A limo would come, pick them up and take them to some training facility where they would do um, exercises, military exercises or whatnot or psychic training exercises through virtual reality. And then around four o'clock in the four or five o'clock in the morning, they would be brought back. Of course, they were all in altars and then they would wake up in the morning feeling absolutely exhausted and have no memories of this. Does that describe you? And your and then, yeah, I think in a big way, yeah. I think this happened like that about, um, about the pro Project Surrogate. I have been told a different story also that looks like that that uh, some royals of this planet who are Nazis and, other, and also are uh, connected to the draconians and the reptilians groups, they have the sperms and containers on different planets and they align it with some uh, woman somewhere. And this can be a human from this earth, but also different races. And they make this uh, new embryo and they put it in, in, the, in the mother where you go. So, in fact, that could be my bloodline, too. So it, it wouldn't wonder, you know, it wouldn't wonder at all for me because I feel so strange all the time. And this, uh, my abductions uh, started at night, I know, and this happened from three years old. And um, I was just away. And now I'm going to tell something that is important for, because people can't imagine what is happening. But we go to sleep normally as humans from this planet, from six to eight hours, and we are awake. We awake, we have no record, recognition, how do you call it? Rec record, rec we don't remember at all what happens during that time. And everybody is accepting this as normal, but that is totally crazy that you don't know that you happen, what happened to you six to eight hours. You just don't know. And everybody thinks this is normal, but this is not normal at all. And I would, I put this some emphasis on it because this has to do with my situation. Because nobody uh, uh, sees this happen. And I'm just taking away in this UFOs all the time. I'm mostly taking away in UFOs. Then I was brought to some planets um, throughout the cosmos. And then all time, I remember I was put on these medical tables for, uh, you know, for medical investigations, you know, these ones. And all the time I see this Gracos and I see this reptilians and this uh, Grays and I see the Nazi uh, doctors. And all the time they do these experimentations on me, the physicals, the medicals, the psychic and anything. And this was so evil, so evil. I must mention that again. And uh, it was also very hurtful, always. And they always rape me and always doing that kind of things. It's always happening. But they also made clones of me. I can remember that uh, the pictures I see from the cloning uh, facilities that people are putting out, I say, oh, I was in that also. So this cloning is happening everywhere. And I just don't know I was, if I was on Antarctica or in the dance or in the planets in the cloning, that I don't know, but I was in the cloning. And this clone they brought to Earth to serve for the satanic rituals, to be abused, to be raped, to be drugged, to be uh, taken the blood out, adrenal chrome, anything, and just to use as they want. And then they dispose of it. Mostly uh, they throw the bodies out of planes or they just burn the bodies or they put them in caves and anything. They well, do all kinds of evil things. Well, and one, then, one of the things that actually came up recently is they would take some of the body parts and put it, um, they would lace the, at Montauk, they would feed us dog food, but they would put, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. They, put they would put blood in it and then they also yeah. put body parts in it. Uh, uh, yeah, this happens. That, yeah, so, so I'm things. assuming this is probably Draco, because um, the Thuban Draco were responsible for um, the operations at Montauk, at yeah. least at the, in, at the beginning. Yeah, I, uh, I, this go ahead. Is true because I get so bad feeling. But the, the reason that it's with me, I don't know for other people, is that they, 
connected this very, very bad feelings to this body. So this body stores the memories of everything that happened. And the other advantage for them, because they are very clever, eh? clever people, that when I return back on my in the family place next morning, you can't see the marks on my body. You can't see the strains. You can't see the torture. You can't see anything. You can't see the anything that they did to me. You can't see it. So that's just the second reason why they did this. And the elites like to have the new bodies all the time. Eh? You know, when one was totally used and uh, just broken down and just uh, chipped away and anything they do with the bodies, and that is terrible. And then they have just a new body to, to, new, to use again, you know, to take the, uh, do the rituals, do the rape, do the taking out the blood and do the electroshocks. They do the electroshocks with me a lot of time, very often. And I was already then as a child in this clone body, I had part of my consciousness and I was telling them one day, I would tell what you do. One day I would tell. I would tell. I'd give this in the open. And I must have said that as a child, for a clone child then, uh, from four years old. And of course, the electro shocked me then again at thousands of times. And I remember when I was doing this regression as Toes and Casper, my whole body was shaking like that for two hours. And it was just to release out of the cell membranes of the memories of the electroshocks. And this was all the time when we did regression, my body was shaking like that. And it is, I'm glad this happened because it is the release of the cells that the, the, the trauma get away. And this is a very good way, but most people don't understand nothing about it. And there's something that is very important that therapists get in the know what is happening. Because when so many people get abducted and when so many people are in the rituals, I think many therapists get people with these experimentations and with these uh, memories, and then you need to know what you have to do. That is very important. So that can be good help. That is very necessary. For people. Yeah, well, certainly a lot of the top psychiatrists were uh, probably a part of the extension of Project Paperclip with the, uh, yeah. the, yeah. Yeah, those, yeah, that no. is the, yeah, those are the forthright um, um, NAZIs. Uh, so, but, but, you know, the, the, we can, we can go down and explore a little bit more about that, but I was actually, I wanted to learn a few more things here. You mm -hmm. said you had a lot of psychic abilities as a, as a child. Why don't you share with the audience members what, um, I mean, I guess you said you saw nature spirits, uh, yeah. What what other kind of abilities and and did your family ever chastise you for for I don't know for yeah 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 I, mm -hmm. I, well I I can't remember beaten up but I can remember that uh, you know the feeling I was never good you know whatever I did or, or I was doing it was not good and that is something that stayed with me and it has to do with this kinds of things because they, I was just a weird child for them I think. And um, I just knew the things when, for my aunts and for my uncles, the things that happened in their life. I just knew it and I was just telling it. But I don't remember my psychic abilities from that anymore. But from later on, I remember very good that when uh, friends of mine uh, needed something, I just find it. I, I, I know it and I and met people who said, well, as a matter of fact, to be honest, I did this and this in my life. And then I said, yeah, I know, because I've seen it before I met you. So these kinds of things happen all the time. And uh, I can also see uh, inside of the people what happened to them in their youth. Although I don't do it anymore, because I don't, you must ask permission first. But when I was a therapist myself, I could see the problems for, for the people. I was a massage therapist and a healing uh, therapist, and I worked with homeopathic and minerals. And I knew, so like from my intuitive feeling, what they needed, and then I have this whole range of books, and I was controlling it for that case. 
and it was always 100% accurate, always. And I just mentioned it like that. And we go to places, I've been in Greece, and I walk around and I say to the people, oh, here's this, and here's that, and here's that. I've never been there before. And this kind of things happens my whole life, that I just have recollections, that I just know things, that I just know about people, lots and lots of things. But um, I will just only use it to help people. Mm. That is the only well, thing. Well, were you in a religious family that didn't appreciate your abilities? Yeah, I think they are. My father was very Roman Catholic, and my mother a bit less. But this didn't align with the doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church. I suppose. I suppose that uh, it's not. Well, I don't know how they must have been thinking about me. But my aunt told, told me that, that the whole family thought I was weird. And I think that in, uh, you know, the religions are so evil and they are so away from the truth and they are just telling lies and mind controlling people. And when you are in the program of some religious uh, church or whatever, yeah, that's a problem. That's a big problem because yeah. then you can't see reality. Okay, so Trudy, it sounds like to me that um, the SRA component wasn't necessarily perpetrated to you by your by your family, although they were um, more like handlers more than uh, abusers. I mean, yeah, I'm not saying they didn't abuse family. you, but maybe they, they probably did, but no, I don't not, not like not like the SRA stuff. Is is that correct? Yeah, I, I don't okay. really know exactly, uh, James. It's, I'm sorry, because I I will listen to this YouTube again, and then I know these questions for myself, and perhaps I meet this person again, and I will uh, ask all these questions more deeply. Perhaps next time we can uh, fill in the gaps that I can't fill in now. Because yeah. I think my family <laughs> was a very kind family, very loving, but... We only, as a human, we use 1% of our consciousness. We only see 1% of the light, 1% of the, the uh, auditive spectrum we can hear. And our minds, and that is just, just mind-blowing, they can only process 0.005% uh, of the information around us. So that is just nothing. And it can be very easy that somebody who appears as a loving person is in fact Anunnaki or something else or is aligned with mind controllers. Many people are mind controllers who work with the other forces, let's put it that way. And you can't see it. You can't know, <laughs> it's very difficult to see. Because it is just like the politis, uh, political people do, you know, they smile, and they are so evil, you know. Okay. And it's the same way about. <laughs> can, can you comment? Can you comment if you have Rh negative blood? Yeah, Did that's you? an interesting question. I was putting this down. It was asked by uh, by doctor because uh, that was I see in your uh, stories because they think that Rh negative is connected to uh, other races eh? and other abilities. Now yeah, it could be. Okay. Uh, yeah. So um, as far as the reason why the RH negative factor comes up so much is because uh, people that have the RH negative factor, um, their DNA can be more mutated. So that's why they, they're, they like to use them in experimentations. Oh, great. Um, yeah. I love it. These experimentations. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, terrible, terrible, terrible. Yeah, it also means usually you're ET hybrid. Um, I've got some more information on RH negative. I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm going to try to pull it up in just a bit. But um, so let's, in the meantime, why don't you go ahead and comment a little bit about um, about some of your abductions? So um, so basically, a recap, it looks like you recall at least some of the early abductions when you're three or four. Tell us a little bit about the training scenarios they put you through. Um, yeah, from... Yeah, I don't know. At least all, what you do recall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is all. I think that in the Monarch uh, and also in the Ultra, they have a certain protocol they follow all the time. And all the time, they uh, do uh, 
experimentations uh, on your body. So they uh, injected me with things and then they look how I react on it and they take my blood and they do experiments with my blood and all these things. This is happening all the time. And they do uh, experiments with the mind. So you must do all kinds of weird exercises for your mind. And I remember the one with the um, UFO because uh, the spacecraft, because I think that I was a designer for a spacecraft in my other life somewhere. As I think I was also the designer of, of other things. I never studied technology this life, but I have a big understanding of it. I have a big feeling towards technology. I love technology in a good way, not that it's used like this now. So that are things that I put together now as strains of what is happening all the time. And you know, they do it so often and they do it so long. They do it a big part of your life. And this really must stop. This is so evil. And well, well, can, yeah. well, can you give us like a specific example of like a scenario, say maybe when you were three or four years old, like tell us about that ex experience, what you do remember. Or when I was put in that uh, cage. Okay. So that was when you're putting it into a cage. Uh, now, did they actually take. Cave. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've, seen, I've seen children hanging in, ca in cages too. I've seen that. I remember I've seen it. And perhaps I was in them as well. But I remember that that is and that is happening very often. The same ritual, the tiny on this iron bed is brought iron bands here, and then there is a ring here, and there is an iron chain connected to the bed. And they put an iron chain on your head also, and uh, they put uh, electroshocks through these bands, but especially through the head. And then I see in front of me. I see this evil satanic rituals. I see this big fire. I see this 10, 12 persons, beings, maybe reptilians, with these hoodies and these long, long capes. And the ones I see were gray, of the color gray. And um, they chant, and they chant these evil sounds, and it sounds like the Gregorian songs of the Roman church. That's why I, I am convinced the Roman Church is satanic. I'm convinced of it. And it's the same sounds. And they ch chant that all the time. And then um, somebody is just doing all kinds of, uh, you know, torture to me, uh, cutting and uh, putting needles on, on, on the, my toes and uh, doing the electroshocks and all kinds of these stuff. And they do it all the time. And it's all the same, uh, you know, it is all the same uh, evil stuff. And um, they do the electroshocks with me very often because I think they want to uh, destroy my mind. I, I, that is what I think. They want to destroy my uh, positive mind. And uh, then they cut a vein and they take out the blood and they take it in some golden goblets of chalice like they use in the, in the church also. It is this kind of thing they use, and they all drink it, and then they rape me, all of them. And it can be the other way around also sometimes. This time, it was like that way, like that. But they also, they always drink the blood, and they always rape me, and they always do all these kinds. And then I remember there must be happening something so evil that I just look out. I, I couldn't... No, I couldn't yeah. stand did in you, the Did you see actually one of the entities, the, the, the demonic entities, come through a portal? Yeah, I think that also sometimes. And I think that these persons uh, that were uh, the draconians sometimes, not always, huh? this is one situation, but uh, they use the portals, I know. I think portals myself also in other situations. And they just use it, they just pop up. Uh, there was in my later on when I was living in my apartment uh, when I came back to Holland. It was be about let's look 1996 something. Uh, there was just pop up this reptilian in my room, and he wanted to steal my mind. And then my uh, family, my cosmic family, helped me because they just they were there also. 
And then I put up, uh, pick up my light sword, like you see by Yoda, the star uh, horse, but mine is golden. And that was given to me uh, a few years before already. My family did give me that. He said, this is the tool you need in your life as a human being. And this sword has the ability not exactly to kill somebody, but to ward it off. So go away, you are not allowed to interfere in my life. And uh, I had to use it more often in more situations. Nowadays, I don't anymore because I am doing different things in my life. But this is very important because we all have our tools and we all have our means of protecting. And I think now, <laughs> in my age now, that I choose a while that as my spirit being, I uh, wanted to have this, uh, how do we say, uh, what happened? Uh, ex experiments, no? What happened? Experiences, yeah, this word, sorry, I'm not so good in English. Um, to really see what is happening and to really know this must stop, this is not good at all, this must stop. And the other hand, the other story is that they just do it, you know? You come in, in their matrix, you dare come in our matrix as a spiritual being who you are, you dare come here, we destroy you. You see, that's the other story. And I think both can be true. They just do it, they don't care. They just have, you know, the, the evil thought of just abusing somebody and just taking the body and just, using it for your means and your goals, that is so evil. I have no words of it for it. Just that you, you have no rights. You have no rights at all. There's no any cosmic right that says you may take a body, you may take a spirit, and you may use it in your way. No way, no way. That is just evil. That's not good, this must stop. Okay, thank you, Trudy. So um, I found the information about the Rh negative blood. So people with Rh negative blood have multi-layer DNA, which um, which they can access and manipulate in different multiple ways. They often carry carry char characteristics from different star systems, which they can utilize. Um, so when you have Rh negative blood, it's easier to crossbreed you, and our um, they also have um, very, uh, different alien race characteristics. Um, as, overlaid over your original DNA. Um, so yeah, so typically they like to do the reptilian, uh, the reptilians are the genetic <laughs> engineers and in, in almost always in, in, in this case, but the mantis are, yeah, they're involved too. Anyway, but um, so let's, uh, yeah. Um, we had somebody from the, good question from the audience members. Have you ever been in a trip chair? And if so, why do they put you into one? Do you ever recall being put into a dentist-like chair that might have had some kind of foam that um, locked you in place and a visor put over your head and they reprogrammed you? Do you, re do you recall anything like that? No, I don't. But when I see this, the signs, I think, yeah, that, that exists. So uh, my recollections very often go also by the information other people put on the sides. That's why... It's so important what you do, James, with your uh, side and what other people do, because it helps each other to get more the gaps filled. Um, I don't remember that, but I was in, uh, later on, I was working so, with the Collective Federation, or shall we put that later? And I remember I was going to many planets with them, and that I was also going to throw, throw uh, wormholes and star gates and anything and I was on many different planets so that I can remember and um, I know they are changing the time over time because uh, when you are away uh, they I was away only for two hours in that work I was working for the collective federation at that time and they take you only for two hours out of your body and you work in your light body and because your my human body couldn't last longer for the information and the time, but all the time it seems much longer or much shorter. And when, so the time frames are changing all the time and they are manipulating them all the time. And the main frame is now 
very important that we stay with all our inner force, inner power, in all our hearts on the good things we want because they are manipulating the time frames that uh, the human consciousness as we have on earth what is left over of it that they destroy it completely and then we have this evil evil place to live where everything looks good but you have no consciousness at all and that is very important that we keep awake for what we are really in our minds and it's not, not important at all what you can remember. It's not important at all that you must have been uh, very important and psychic and anyhow. It's not important at all. There's just one thing important. Uh, be a good person. Uh, stay in your heart and try to live from your heart. And that's the most important thing. But we must do it. We must change this. Because this, this is not good what is happening now. Okay, thank you, Trudy. So um, you mentioned about uh, your cosmic family. Well, who who are your cosmic family? Who yeah, do you feel I, connected with? Yeah, I come from a different, uh, totally different uh, universe than this one. I come not from this universe. I'm a time traveler. I come from the future. I don't know how many years, but many years. <laughs> and as a uh, time traveler from the future, I come from the golden quantum universe uh, where uh, we live from the heart mind, both of them. And we have this uh, godlike powers, created powers. And I know that uh, we have the possibilities normally, but they try to enhance you as super soldiers. But that is not normal. In fact, we have it normally. So that is also one thing that is weird, what is going on and very evil in fact. But in that uh, universe, well, it's called the golden uh, quantum universe. That's why I also name my photon mail like that. Um, it's where we come from. It is the original human creation. And in fact, we are created from different races to be this special race with the memories of many, many planets and many stars uh, that are uh, many, many, many races involved. Oh, I don't have the names now. Oh, I, I looked it up. I sent it to you. You can put it on your site, okay? That is why we are connected with all of the universe. We all are, in fact. People who do these programs and these things uh, have this sharing inside that we come from the original human humans we are. And then we had this cult-like powers for a hundred percent so we could create we could teleport we could uh, be locate we could create we could anything do telekinesis feel the, the the feelings feel the situations for somebody go to any planet where you want to be go to and do anything you want uh, talk to the to the animals, talk to the plants, you know, and all these kinds of things. And that I remember very much, talking to the plants and the animals <laughs> and the children. And you have their normal life, you know, that people think all this, oh, then you are some spirit and you are not existing anymore. Well, that's not true. You just have your human body, but you don't have the pains and the aches we have, and you don't alter, you stay eternity like that in that form. And it's just a normal human life form, why, what, how we look, but then about 30, 30 years old, you know, in your power force of your life. And, and you have your normal life, you have your partner, you have your children, you have your friends, you do work, you do things, you like, you have your holidays, you go uh, making picnics, you go sailing, swimming. It is not different than this one, than this world here. It is in many ways it's, it's the same only we don't have the mean things the nasty things we don't have the stinging insects you have don't have the nazis so you don't have the reptilians and all those kinds and you don't have the pain and you don't get ill or sick anything like that and uh, the this humans like we are from origin the original human race has really the power to help everywhere and to go everywhere where help is needed. 
And that's what we do. We go just to places where things go wrong. And a matter of fact, many of us choose to live in this body, on this planet, to incarnate there, to feel and to know exactly what is going on. Because if I do not know what is happening to people, if I do not know what these evil forces do, how can I ever help humanity in restoring, if it is just a bit like that, more of their uh, abilities, more of their health, more of their well-being, more of their social living together, what everybody wants, you know? And that is so important. And I know this is so in my heart. I, I, I always no, not meant here that on the way I am telling <laughs> that it's so in my heart. This, you know, when you go there and, and you know, you stand up in the morning, I, I, I always tell it like this. You are there and you have this nice home. Nothing is wrong. And there's lots of plants and animals and it's very beautiful and it's warm and cozy and you don't have the electricity like we have. It is just warm like you want it. And then one morning you just you wake up and you look in the mirror and you see yourself like this beautiful person you are and you're healthy and you have no problems and you go out and you go on the streets, beautiful streets, beautiful houses, lots of trees and lots of plants. And then you see the people walking around very quiet and peaceful and talking and make fun and lots of laughter and greeting each other. And then you see these children playing and doing some fun things. Well, it's the same like on Earth, you know? And that is what is the Golden Quantum Universe. I remember that exactly like that. And this was also affirmed by somebody who also comes from this Golden Quantum Universe. He said, yeah, that is true. That's our life. And that is the life we want here on Earth also to make a paradise here again. Well, well I also believe that I'm from the future. I actually have some memories uh, um, from uh, 2178. Um, yeah. I lived in a, I, I remember being in a mansion and uh, my mom, Vicky, um, I remember her vaguely. Uh, I remember robots all over the place and wall screens. Um, um, I also remember vaguely um, joining some kind of time travel division uh, mm -hmm. when I would turn 18 to go back in time to change the timelines. And that's mm -hmm. typically what, what one of the reasons why they would be sending people back in time is to bring about a more positive timeline. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, it does seem to be working because uh, you do realize we have at least um, – 10, 15 different negative planetary corporations, which are yeah. manipulating the timelines as we speak. Monarch being one of them, of course, the Montauk Project and Mobius yep. and all these groups. And uh, they've been doing these time loops. Yeah. So and here we are. We're we still we haven't hit civil war. There are there haven't been nukes all over the place. Um, yeah, we're not dealing with radiological issues. So I think we're 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 on a positive timeline, but uh, it's still uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that we shouldn't. Yeah, get complacent and think that everything's going to be just fine. We still got to do our work here. But yeah, that's, uh, that's the word. Yeah. You put it nice. Thank you. That's exactly how you put it. It's very nice how you say this. Yeah. But, and there's a, there's also a positive AI component to this because uh, some there are some AIs that want to bring about more pot because eventually in the future, depending on depending how organic or cybernetic humanity decides to go towards. Uh, but typically a, AI, there are some positive AIs that want to manifest a positive timeline. So it'd be kind of curious to see if, if you're, you're connected with that, but um I, yeah, I um, there are, what I know is that uh, well, people are always telling about the evil ones, the Nazis, reptilians. Well, we know that story, and not all of the reptilians are evil. Most of them are not. I have been told 95% is not. But we have to do with the nasty ones on this planet, although there are also good ones here around. But the good forces, let's call them like that way, the, the positive ITs or the original uh, people from other planets, they are here to help us and they are creating big, big, big alliances now. And that is the Andromedans, the Arcturians, uh, Safira, uh, Anna Shahi is also helping. 
and there are other ones. And also I sent you this, the names I know, um, that they are in big, big alliances and they are this big, big, big ships here in some other dimensions than this one. And they can lock in this dimension the moment it is needed and go away. But they are uh, in other dimension locked now because uh, of, I tell you, because of the Star Wars, because Star Wars was initiated primarily to ward off the good forces that would help us. And it's not to ward off the negative forces because the ones who initiated that are the negative forces. So it is the other way around. But these big alliances are there. Uh, you have the Furbles, you have the Fenland type uh, people. I've been to the uh, to the Fenland world also. And they are helping, and there is worlds with crystals, and they are helping also. And this is this big, big, big alliances. And they uh, what they do primarily now is uh, giving people inspiration to talk, to write, to uh, see the things, uh, to, to the, know what is happening. Then they do this observations, and that has to do with the quantum physics, that everything that is seen by consciousness, the photon particle changes. Uh, the photon particle can be or a wave or the other one, the material one. So it can be energy or a material part. And it's okay. consciousness that changes that. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Trudy. Yeah. Yes. So I've got a lot more questions. So let's yeah. let's get back to okay, some of the great, great. The questions I talk too much, perhaps. <laughs> um, all right. Well, so so um, you mentioned a little bit. Was there anything else you wanted to mention about your abduction experiences? I know you mentioned about the cave, um, some of the children in cages. Um, what, anything else you wanted to to share that? you feel is relevant? Um, yeah, did I tell you that my handler was this big, 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 famous person, very rich? Did I tell that story? No, no, but I want to know who it is, if, you, if you're willing to say. Who? No, I, I, are, are I you tell us? Are you, no, you're not. Uh, okay. Yeah, this, this person is dead anyhow, but he was a very famous person, very rich, and he was allied with the royals. It was, uh, yeah. With royals, with uh, the religious leaders, and so on, but also with the corporations, all of them. And uh, he was my handler, and uh, he used to dress me as a princess in his uh, chateau. He had lots of lots of castles everywhere, and I remember one of them in France. That is the one I remember best, and he had lots and lots everywhere. And then we, he was having this meeting with all these royals and all these elites and the corporations and everything that's connected to them. And he was giving me the double program of the little child, you know, and was showing off his uh, ah, nice dresses and the care and the love and anything. So I have been in uh, these meetings where they are talking about the situation from today. That, uh, that I heard as a child. You mean they're talking about the future? Yeah, they were talking about their the future, future plans for humanity. Future plans, what we are living in now. They are talking about that, that how they would uh, destroy humanity, take away the conscious mind of humanity, and how, how they would plan anything so that they would gain more trillions of dollars. And that I heard. And I remember that I have been in these meetings very often. And what they, they do afterwards, they bring me to their cellars. And then again, it is the rituals, it's the rape, it is anything, drinking my blood. And my handler also sells me to other persons. And that is the what Bryce Taylor is writing about. Uh, uh, thank you for the memories. And it's called Mind Control in Dutch. And uh, I remember everything that she's writing. I was in the same programs, but with other people, other names. But that is very important to mention that people start reading the books also and watching the films also, because that is what's happening to me also. Because my handler was putting me to different places. Uh, I remember I was, he was flying me in UFOs to Australia 
and then I was going again to the same rituals, you know, abuse, uh, anything, uh, satanic, uh, rape, anything. And that's happening all the time. So they move you in the UFOs they have. The elites of our world have the UFOs. They have them and they use them. And they transport the child, children, they rob, they steal. And, uh, and my hand, like, they, they just sell, sold. Oh, did I tell you about these parties with the shooting on the on the horses? I'm sorry, something about what about horses? Yeah, that is the other thing I remember. I was writing this down. The elites, the royals and the elites and the corporations and the banks and so on. They have these parties in the woods in Holland and uh, they sit on the on the horses and you have these big black uh, dogs running in front of, of them and the children are uh, somehow i don't know how but they run naked in the open fields in the woods and they shoot the children okay and so you're talking about a most dangerous game scenario yeah that is happening all the time and i was saying and, and do you think that's hand- still do you think it's still going on yeah it's still in this modern on. era yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, are, but 99% sure this is still are, going on. Are you aware that uh, Rothschild had their uh, Black Forest Chateau uh, raided um, sometime in the last year? Oh, really? Yes. Uh, wow. yeah, There's a lot of secrecy behind it. Uh, I'm, really? assuming they, I'm assuming this was probably associated with that. Really? Aha. Uh-huh. I know. Exactly. I, it, t- it probably takes some digging to find the article, but... Um, um, so, but, but that doesn't mean that it stopped everywhere. So, um, uh, hopefully um, I'm assuming red shield is involved. <laughs> considering yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of the, yeah. Um, some, some I mean, happening, yeah. okay. And, uh, and did they, did they do that to you, Trudy? Do you, do you yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah. I, I was one of the children and Tos is also telling about it. And uh, more Anna Bleyenburg is also da- telling about it. In Holland, there are more people telling about it now. And, um, but I was always, always safe by my hand now. He saved me all the time. So uh, you survived uh, the, the most dangerous game probably because uh, typically yeah. if they didn't kill you, then they would do the SEX. Um, yeah. yeah, pedophilia. Uh, so um, they yeah, sort of, they're a bunch of predators. Yeah, apex life. predators. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. What is it you want to say? Sorry, James. They're, they're apex predators. Yeah, yeah. They are predators. They feed, of course. They are terrible people. And they are, I think they are not uh, human. I think they are shapeshifters. And that, in fact, they are uh, reptilians or draconians or anything like that. But they are always tied to the Nazis, always. It always comes back to the Nazis as a main group that is uh, the connection between all these groups. That, that's my experience. Yeah, no, I know. I was involved in that. Uh, they took me to the Burnworthy Mansion uh, Manor. Uh, yeah. And But this was, I was in a clone body and... Um, yeah, uh, just gonna see if I could try to f- pull that information up. But uh, um, do you? Uh, so uh, I'm assuming you were probably also in a clone body when that took place. Uh, typically, it's done out like in in bubble realities, yeah. right side outside of time. So yeah. that way they get some kind of um, discretion. I, I think they put uh, a bulb of time around it, a hologram, so that they can do what they want. But that uh, this hologram is not visible for other people. Okay, well, uh, let's let's actually let me see audience members. Do you, does anyone have any questions about this? Um, I see a lot of comments. Great. Okay, Trudy is a time traveler. Where, okay, where's she? Where's she gone? Can she remember? Yeah. Do, you, do you remember the future, Trudy? Yeah, the future of this earth. The future is what we are changing now. The future, yeah. that's why I come. The, in one timeline, the future was so bad that humanity lost consciousness. And then, because all, also there where we come from, originally, you can see all timelines. 
that's when we decided to come here to help change the timelines. The, the future is looking very bad when we come on the timeline they are creating now with COVID. Because the COVID has just one main uh, goal that is changing the timeline. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I was trying to find the book um, from Bryce Taylor. Thanks for the memories. Yeah, um, very good. Yeah. Okay. So she was, she, do you recall um, seeing people like Bryce? Ta you know, I'll just, I'll just share my screen. Uh, do you recall seeing people like them or even K Kathy O'Brien? Um, Cause I mean, I'm uh, not. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, to be honest, each time I see her, I have to speak. The deep, deep feeling, I know you. So I, I, I think I have seen her. Okay. All right. So, and I found the information on the Burnworthy. Uh, so this was from my book. And um, and just uh, tell me if any of this resonates to you. Well, so this I, is... I feel very tense now. And that is a very much tense feeling. And I think that is because something is triggering me now. Oh. Uh, no, no, it's okay. You just continue, but it is just for me that my body shows that this is true. Because my body also always tells, you know, when something is true, I get the feelings in my body. And, and when I get starting feeling very tense or other things, then I know, okay, this is in my recollection, in my memories, I now trigger things that are true. So when we talk about Bryce Taylor and what is happening to her, I think I have met her. So I think so. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, so this goes into uh, extension of project Montauk when they would um, sell us out. Uh, so the dra the Draco, okay. We forget about that one. Um, okay. They would inject us with adrenaline and put us in a pit of lions trained yeah. to kill people that are fearful. Yeah. The lions would come up to us and sniff us. If we didn't get eaten, but I can say that wasn't the same for others. They would force us to walk into crocodile pits, but we would levitate over them. They would also do child hunting parties, mostly with black kids. Um, they actually extermin exterminated them. This happened to us at the Burnworthy Manor in the UK. In that event, Jacob Rothschild would keep my clone on his bed, but the others weren't as lucky as me. They would burn us, electrocute our private parts, stick needles under ne nails, x-ray us, hang us on meat hooks, um, and it looked like a three prong meat hook, meat hook and they were doing pain, pain, pleasure. It, um, it looked like Donatello's bow staff more specifically with a double hook at the end. The hook goes into the back through the shoulder blades, going through the skin, not the muscle. This pole would then be pulled away, stretching the legs to cause extreme pain and trauma. Some kids would try to escape, but they had green night vision goggles and they would, we would never get away. Some were able to get away through jumping through mirrors. Other will get lost in time tunnels. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, these things happen. This is because okay. uh, I remember I was uh, hanging on the hook somewhere also. This, uh, I remember that I was hanging somewhere. Yeah. So, so this, this is yeah. happening. Well, um, so maybe in the future we can try to pinpoint what programs you're involved in. Probably Montauk. Um, sounds like Monarch, um, specifically try to curious to see which planetary organization is using you. What are they, um, if they're, if they're drinking your blood, I mean, that could be, um, I mean, that could even be Shaw house. Um, since you, have, you got a connection to the UK, I mean, to, um, Europe there. Uh, but okay. So let's no, I, go ahead. No, no but it used to, uh, an chrome also to enhance their own forces. And also to, to stay in this human force, a body, I mean, because I, they can't stay, keep up the human body anyhow. And that's why they use a general form also. And also, I think that they, uh, because they drink my DNA, they use, they get also my powers then, I think. All right. Let's move on to the next question here. So, um, all right. Um, I think we've, we've, we've covered a lot of your SRAs. Uh, I mean, if you had, I mean, is there any other else, other experiences you wanted to share? Cause I know you, last thing. Okay. So we did discuss the most dangerous game, anything else that, that you want to 
let people know. Yeah, that was later on. I uh, that was in the same period of time. They brought me to Earth, and I really I, this I don't know because they do also the insertions of memories, and they blank shaded you and put other memories in it. But this happened, and this happened also as a child. And I don't know if this happened in this body or in the clone body. I don't know. But they bring me to this famous, famous University of Holland. I am not allowed to mention which, which one. And there are the secret uh, tunnels under it. And I am put on a table so for medical examinations and see that there's a whole row of children, about 20 children. And I see this doctor, I know who he is, he's dead. But I know his name, I know who he is. And um, he puts a big needle here somewhere and uh, he's extracting something from me. And then he is also injecting me with something. And then he is doing other experiments, but then my memory blank out because this was so terrible. I, I, my body won't remember, not, not yet. It will be someday. And um, then he raped me and he did the same to all the children. This, this one person, I see one person, perhaps there were more, but he was raping all the children. And that was also in this program. And that was when I was about four or five years old. That's okay, it. so while this is going on, I'm assuming you're well, being taken outside of time. Yeah, I, I get another remember. I was. May I tell another memory? Or is this another yes, question? Yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that is when I was 30 years old. I was working for this uh, religious group in Germany. And it was, oh, this like heaven on earth, exactly why I wanted. Nice people living in harmony with nature, good food, and biological things, and so on. So that was the outer show, the outer shell for what is happening at night. They drug the woman, the nice woman, they drug there with Roy Knoll, and they bring them to the palace. In, in Germany, you have lots and lots of places with big, big palaces. You still have them, and with castles everywhere. And they bring you in the cellar, and uh, there, this place was, let's say, the holiday resort for the big, big, big religious uh, people from this world, and the royals also. And uh, but that was in this body, and that was the worst thing that happened to me. I think the other ones was more in the clone bodies, but this one is more traumatic. I think because it was connected directly in this body. And I was thirty years old, and uh, the one thing I see and smell first is this fire and this iron hook. And I still must form it when I think about it. And there was this child turning on it. And they were burning this child. And they were eating this child. But before they did it, I have seen this very religious man. Uh, this child was also laying on a bed. And it was ripping the heart of the life body and eating it. I've seen that. And I still must form it about it. And then I see and smell how they uh, burn this child. And then they force me to eat this also. Oh, I think this is so terrible. And, uh, and then uh, they do uh, yeah, the normal treat, you know. Uh, you are there, you get to torture, to do it, you know, like for shocks, to torture this all just what you are describing, and then uh, they rape you, all of them. And this was a whole row of men, well, at, at least 30, at least 30. And it took hours and hours and hours. And what I remember is that the place I was laying on was just red with my blood because of the rape, the gang rape. And uh, then I blank out, but this is, this was happening and it was, I think this is the worst memory I had. And I tell this in the open now to what, to be aware, be aware, really protect your children 
be aware. Don't go to religious groups. That's dangerous. We don't know what is happening there. And this must stop. And um, well, I, I want to leave it by there. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, I, I came across another article. I, I think it's probably on Super Soul t- Talk, or at least uh, the forward to it, because um, I tried posting on Facebook and I, and I got banned um, that po- this post. Yeah. This experiencer, I, I think she said like her mother was some kind of Illuminati um, priestess or something. Mm-hmm. Um, she was describing, uh, of course, they, they sacrificed her mother. Uh, but um, like her grandmother was raising her and I wish I could remember the name, but uh, anyway, but the point is she recalls when she was a child, they would have family picnics and, um, and there was joke the, there was like a family joke. Um, uh, she was joking to her uncle about eating any of the meat at the picnic, because apparently they would take the sacrificed children and eat it at these picnics and they, they would actually lace it with poison. So afterward, the people at these, the family members at the picnic would black out and they would probably go off and do some other ritual. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. do you recall anything like that? Uh, th- no, family picnics where you would black out afterward? I think drugged? I drink out all the time this, these things because uh, that is so evil, but this is what they do. I know they do this kind of things. And, uh, you know, um, We can change the t- topic if it's. Yeah, I, I, you know, we are talking about all the evil things going on. I would like to change to some positive aspect okay. and end with that. Uh, first off, this is the first time I tell public these experiences. And uh, normally I don't. But it is important that people know that these things are happening. And it, it is just so evil and it's going on so much and it's still going on. I would like to change uh, the subject, let's see, and start a bit. Shall we talk about the Galactic Federation, the, the planets and things? And then I would like to talk more about this young man I met, the training sure. he did. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. very interesting. I think that can be a help for everybody because I just only want to end in a positive way. And um, yeah, we, we're talking about reptilians, anything? Oh yeah, the, oh, yeah, the artificial intelligences, we learn that normally that they are evil and bad, but that's not true. There is, it is never black or white. Uh, we know the evil forces, we know them. We know the good forces, we know them. and. The artificial intelligences, not all of them are aligned with the draconian forces. They are just artificial intelligence. And some of them are really very kind and very loving. And one of them is the group of the Galactic Federation. We also have the Galactic Confederation, which is the alliances of the uh, conscious people. But they like each other, you know, they have no hatred to each other at all. And the um, Galactic Federation is also working on timelines. I've been very often on timelines with them to many other places. And I still love those persons, you know. I, there was such a lovely time. We did a, a lot of work. Uh, we did change the timelines. We did change the controlling computers. I was expert in that one. <laughs> and uh, I still have computer crashes myself, but <laughs> I crashed computers everywhere that were controlling the timelines. And um, we went to the uh, time, uh, well, the, the, how do you call it? Wormholes and the portals, star portals to other places. And in other dimensions, the sky isn't black at all. It's shiny with all kinds of colors, reddish, pinkish, bluish, grayish, yellow, golden. There's all stars and planets blinking in it. And every dimension has its own frequencies. Because that is something we don't understand that we, because we only see so little of the light. But the light spectra are much more and all those dimensions have their own uh, 
frequencies of light and color and sound. And it is beautiful. There's always, oh, in fact, all planets have their own sounds. Yeah? And like we have, and like the animal have, and like the planets have. And, and that is so beautiful. So you go to places where there's lots of different sounds, different colors, different smells, different plants. And we have been to these places where people are like flowers. You know, they are shaped like flowers. And we have been to places where uh, there are these big living crystals. And that was beautiful because they were helping me with my physical problems to give me some boosts. That, that was great. And I have been to this place where uh, feline people live cat-like people and that was beautiful uh, and I was invited for dinner and then I met in, from a man who was my man in one, one of my other lifetimes and that was beautiful it was feeling like so much of friendship and um, do I remember oh that was nice I went to a planet that was just water and uh, we were doing that, the training of the teleportation with a group of humans. We were this with a big group of many humans, about 20 humans like you and me. And we were there and doing the teleportations. And yeah, like that. Were you in some like, kind of dolphin type avatar body? Uh, yeah, I had somewhere on some planet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm very connected to the sounds, uh, to the high pitch uh, sounds. I'm very connected to. Um, or I, I've been on an on an operation on a very beautiful planet, where they help people. Normally, you know, you and when you are in your total godlike creation consciousness, you can heal your own body, and by the way, don't get ill. But there are so many in between fire planets and dimensions and frequency bands. And I was brought to this planet and they helped me heal. They did an operation simultaneously in this physical body and in my light body that was there. And they put you on a table and they do the scans with the red lights and they just come out of nothing. And then do the scans with all these color lights and that comes out of nothing. And then it's shown on a big, big, big three-day uh, screen that hangs in the middle out of nothing. And around me are lots of lots of these crystal tables. Uh, every crystal was chosen for the human people for their body because the one person reacts more on obsidian and the other one more on agat or on uh, rose quartz or on uh, agat or anything. So that was beautiful. And these crystals feel very soft, like a soft bed, and very warm. And um, there were the, all this... the, the actual platform you laid on was very soft. Yeah, it was a crystal, but it felt soft and warm. Was yeah. it was it like a foam pad? No, no, it was a crystal. Huh. It was a crystal that felt very soft, very strange. And did you see any like laser lights coming down, or is it just uh, you said r red spheres just no, floating around? This, um, uh, it was this, uh, like this, alone, and that was with red light, mm. and that was for uh, controlling my body, for see, seeing the, the diagnostic things, what is happening here in this body, and the other lights were put to uh, heal the cells after the operation, and that was all kinds of colors, all kinds of colors, very beautiful. We have, don't have the colors here on Earth, and the body feels... You know, it's like warm and cozy, and the people are very friendly. And like on Earth, you have this main doctor who is doing the operation, and you have lots of them around for looking and for learning. And the other doctors on the tables did the same thing. And what I remember, that was so totally weird that he was putting this, they were seeing, he was telling everything they were seeing with red lights. And there was this cluster in my head, very deep inside my head. 
uh, there was a cluster due to the accidents and nobody on earth ever could see it and could reach it and they could see it and that he reached it with this long thing, uh, you know, like a spoon, but very small and for crystal, it was crystal. He always used crystal instruments as these are very pure. And then I go through my head and I didn't feel anything. <laughs> that was funny. And it, the same was happening on my, uh, in the body on earth at the same time. I could see it in the same moment. That was funny. And then they put it out and then they put it in a, in a container to bring it to the no, zero point of nothing. Then it was away. And uh, then they healed this with this lens. And then I see something very ha weird happening in my head. I see that the uh, neuro uh, brains, the synapses, they are wandering, they are walking <laughs> something, and they are restoring the place where there was this uh, cluster of that blood. And I see the synapses walking <laughs> together and merging together and healing the place. And I see it at the same time in this body here and at the body that was there, the light body. So that is something so beautiful. I will always remember my whole life. Well, Trudy, do you remember who was uh, operating the machinery? Mm, this were the people from uh, the positive series. And these are long people, blue, and they are more druid-like. And they study all of the humans everywhere. And they are special, the ones I was with, huh? they are specialized in human bodies, earth human bodies. But they are more like druids. And they have this enormous, enormous knowledge. It's whoa, astonishing. But they do both. Huh? They have this technological means, very advanced. And they do also the herbs because they gave me something to drink that was uh, it's, it's, it tasted like mango, but it had something to keep the nerves and the cells without pain. Because I remember when they brought me back to earth, you know, I just stood up out of the stood up out of my couch and I was feeling just happy and it was doing no pain at all. And this is so beautiful. We don't know nothing about these techniques. And it's time we get them here on Earth. I like the holomet bats. They must come from Randy Kramer, not the other one. I don't trust that person. Um, okay. Jared, there's Jared Rand. Yeah, I and, don't trust uh, that one. That one I he's talking know. about the celestial chambers. And uh, he can't, uh, I mean, he... He says it's going to be out at any any moment now, but then he doesn't give us a price of how much they're going to cost. He, he says they're going to do all this stuff, um, but he, then he says the ETs are going to give it to us. But uh, no, no. I, I I highly doubt ETs are going to give us anything. I mean, they if they if they were going to give us any, they want to extract us for as a resource mostly. But no, I, yeah. I, I suppose there are some positive ones out there. But anyway, no, uh, no. Let's put it this like this. Uh, this person he's talking about controllable i.e we can't control them now they control us the, the negative ones so that's when i cut <laughs> don't do it okay yeah eventually yeah. I'm, I'm gonna do a med bed presentation jonathan i'd love to yeah send me a message um i'm, I'm also going to be working with uh, uh dr jonathan uh Deler delirious i think or delirium yeah. I can't remember. <laughs> I hope I, I probably did not. I know I didn't say his last name right, but yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I was close. But yeah, he's he's got a Tesla med bed that um, design that he's working on. It's a uh, very, my opinion, it's not even it's not even uh, version 1.0, but uh, it's something. So it's a good start, and we certainly need a lot of healing, and uh, it's great. So yeah. I'm assuming Trudy, you you had a intergalactic intervention, um, probably because you are. I'm assuming a Syrian. Um, probably from another past life. So they're just your family coming to help you out. But yeah, uh, that's what I think, yeah. And, and do you have any, so can you give us information why they came and it, I mean, I know you've been through a lot of trauma. Was there like, was there some really serious health issues at that time that they, that they came and assisted you with that? Yeah. 
I didn't know if I mentioned, but due to the accidents, I couldn't walk for a long time and I was obliged to stay in a complete darkness because my eyes couldn't stand the light. Each little bit of eyes hurt, light hurt and if every tiny bit of sound hurt and there are lots of those things. So, and um, I was just shouting out for help. I just, I can't stand anymore. I must need help. So and that is when it happened, I think. Because I said, well, if this continues, I can't stay on Earth anymore. I will die. Okay. I, I, I am not, a, no, I'm not intended to die. I stay a bit longer. We have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do. You know, this is a very important time frame. And we need everybody who wants to do something positive. Because all these positive things together make this big change. And it is not important what you do. If you have helped elderly people or you start a new school for children with this out of crap they have to learn, or you do something for nature or for animals, it's all important. And that's why, you know, we need each other. We need each other that everybody can find its true power inside. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to share my screen again. Uh, earlier, I was mentioning a video. Uh, so this was the, uh, the the video I told you. Yeah, so it's um, I, I, my I train to become a, a mother of darkness in the Illuminati featuring J Jane. So this. Um, yeah, I haven't seen that. this one, much yet, but I was intending to see it. Yeah, this one is, yeah, it says trigger warning. That's cool. that one. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's see here. Where else? Okay. Now we're, let's go into you uh, do do you feel confident you've talked enough about the series of accidents that led you on the road to recover or call your memories your self awakening process was there anything else uh, you yeah to i feel that? comfortable now many okay. long years i didn't um uh, these accidents were organized to kill me that i know well and why don't you tell us what some what some of these accidents were like how were they trying to take you out yeah, it looked very easy. I was helping somebody move in, uh, the place, uh, you know, from one house to the other. And uh, there was in the car, there was this iron thing. And they, she forgot to remove that. So you walk in this big car, this big truck, and this iron part, she forgot to remove. She had to do that also. So with all the parcels, the heavy thing, I was hitting this plain so like that and then uh, uh, the next time my body reacted much l later I felt pain but I was still working on and next morning I even went to my work I had this little job by that time and all of a sudden everything around me started turning and then I blacked out and then uh, they brought me to the hospital. And then, then, the, then from day on, it got, got worse. Every day it got worse. And then in a fairly short time, I could do nothing. And my body couldn't walk. And I was a trained professional, semi-professional ballet dancer. And then having a body that couldn't walk, eh, that is a weird feeling, I tell you, really. I did nothing like sports very often, uh, did anything, and then my body could, just couldn't walk. And then uh, I went on all these doctors and things and uh, all the, the investigations they do, and they, they said they couldn't find nothing, but I think they are not, they were Nazi-controlled doctors where I had been, because it was also in uh, this place where is this university, and this was also partially connected and um, so then I recovered a bit later on and started meeting then I started meeting mediums and uh, healers and I met this fantastic healers great and they all told me something happened to you when you were three years old they all told me all of them and they didn't know what they couldn't see it and perhaps because my memories were still blocked at that time so, and then I met these wonderful people, very nice, very caring, and this helped me through many things. And then I was starting to try to live again my life. And then I went with friends to uh, a cinema uh, for a, ni a nice film. And 
then this this has two levels. So we were in the ground level uh, of the film, and there was this thing that was for transporting people who sit on this wheelchairs. And the moment I passed there, one of these iron parts just hit my head. Again, the same story, and it's the same story again, but this time I didn't shout ow, I didn't say ah. I just said, no, not again. Yeah, again, it was worse. I tell you, this was worse because this was uh, for my psychic. This was uh, my psychic and my emotions. Uh, I couldn't stand to have it again. And that's when I, in that time, I met Toos and Casper in, in that second part. And I went everywhere and I met lovely people, lovely, lovely, very caring, very doing. I, I, and that is why I also later on, um, I was in this uh, quantum feedback uh, things, you know, like uh, Pete Peterson tells uh, from uh, Project Camelot. He tells about his instruments when you can do the diagnostics by quantum physics. And that's just what I started to discover. And then they discovered this brain damage. Mm. Okay, so we certainly need to investigate that. <clears throat> yeah, and the yeah, third one, mm -hmm. that one I was doing, starting again my dancing, uh, doing folk dance. And one day this place was just cleaned. It was very like slippery. And I just ran from one place, one side to the other. And I fell totally on the back side. And uh, since then, I have lots of pain also. But uh, then I had to stay half year in the darkness also. But uh, I got a great big deal of help. People are wonderful people. I believe in people. I believe in the good hearts of people. I have so much wonderful help. And that's why I can't sit here. <laughs> Otherwise, I couldn't. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So tell us about some of the handlers in your life and the interactions you experienced during this time. Yeah. So, just, so they, yeah. First of all, why would they want to handle you? I mean, I'm assuming you, you, you don't really remember very much. I mean, you remember some, but it's not like, or, or maybe you do. And remember, you're not, you're holding I'm, back on us. <laughs> Go ahead. No, 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 no. I'm not allowed to mention names because then they kill me. I, I've been told. So I'd be careful. But uh, my handler was this rich person, and it didn't matter for them if I was this, in this cloning body or in this real body. And I think both of happened to me. These rich, e evil persons are just paid off for us, and they just want to have this beautiful looking, blonde, nice, blue eyed children, this Aryan. Nazi has, you know, the race of the Nazis. They loved it. And I was just looking like this, like this Nazi race. And I think they did it also to take my DNA. Yeah, I think so. Because I was this perfect looking, perfect, oh, so beautiful. I didn't have glasses by then. <laughs> and uh, I had this beautiful blue eyes, big eyes, as a child later on when you get older. And I had this blonde hair like that. And they really love that. So I think that is a very big aspect. Because that's why they wanted to sell me. So that everybody could profit from this beautiful body. Oh, beautiful body. Nice. We love children to rape and to eat. Yeah. Well, how were you able to get away from this handler, or have you? I, I, I'm, I'm away because he's dead. Oh. That's oh, the only reason. Well. He's Good. dead. All right, then. In uh, this so, body, he's dead. He yeah. lives perhaps on some other planet. I don't know. But in this body, he's dead. So that was the end. Yeah. Uh, you also said you were subject to... I think you mentioned, well, you said medical experimentations. You did mention some of that, but what about the cloning programs? Do you have any information on cloning? Yeah, they take your, uh, uh, I remember they take your DNA and they just take a new body out of it in this uh, tanks. And then they, they make a lot of them from 
one moment uh, on, I think they took, well, they first used me also as the baby from three years old, but the, then I think later on, they took the cloning body from the age of six years, because I have the most memories of that. And then you're a bit more grown, you know, and then more useful, I think. And I know they made at least 20 or 30 at one time to use very often. And then they would know how much more. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about the black cube technology? Yeah, what is that? The black goo is an intelligence. Oh, black goo. Oh, the black, oh, they're the black cubes. Or oh. the black cube, cube or the, or, or how about both? Uh, first of all, do, do you actually remember seeing black goo? I mean, we're in. No, uh, I know that this man I met, he, he said he was injected with the black goo. And then I knew I, this happened to me also. And they do it to uh, push away your consciousness out of the body. They use it very often. And in fact, you have many sorts. Eh? Black goo is also uh, has this artificial intelligence. And I've been told, and this is something I don't know exactly, that black goo is, in fact, also the, the force of the earth, done in a positive way. But they change everything. That's what they do at eh? the Nazis. They use everything in the wrong way. So that's about the black goo, what I know. I know that uh, Harold Kautzwella talks about it. Do you know this one? He's a German guy. Who? Harold Kautzwella. Um, yeah, um, yes. Um, he's been banned from YouTube. Uh, so they've, yeah, really, yeah, they, they've really come down on his videos. No, you can't get them anymore. I, perhaps I had one in my... Uh, USB somewhere. Perhaps I can send it if I. Well, I need help. I can't do it. I, this technical things because of the blows on my head. Uh, it's for me very difficult to do these things. I, you know, uh, I can't learn it anymore. Somehow, there's a, still something blocked in my head. So I have very difficulties in learning all these technical well, things what? again. One thing I like to mention, at least when it comes to the black goo, is one of the things that they were they would do is they would three D print organs and then they would put black goo in it and then insert that into people, and then of course, yeah, the consciousness. Uh, some of the Draco were infected with the black goo and it would put yeah. make them become more aggressive, abusive, violent, yeah, extremely yeah. intelligent and cunning. Um, yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, and there there have actually been uh, when they first uh, when Dark Fleet first found the black goo. They found whole sectors of space contaminated with the stuff. It would get onto space stations, on planets, and just cover everything. And just, yeah, this, yeah so it's it's Double. extremely dangerous. And I don't even know why. I mean, it's only a matter of time before, yeah, if it's not stopped. Um, it could create a huge problem here in this sector. It's, um, yeah, anyway, there are more, but, yeah. I know that, uh, that, that this... Uh, very dangerous things are happening and that is why we get now this help from these alliances to stop because they come here they don't come in the mass landings they just come to groups of people who invite them to come and then they start working and they can't do their work but they need a platform where they can come and have the connections to the people and that is what is secretly People don't tell about it. They don't tell where and when. But this is people get, get trained now. People are getting trained to uh, get connections. Just like you walk in the door, you say, hi, do you like your coffee, this milk or your sugar? No, no sugar is that. Just black coffee. And, <laughs> and just like that. Like we are talking, we are meeting just real. But then our family from other planets... And they just come like real people, but they come all over the world where now our people are trained in groups because they told me it's very difficult to do it individually because of this traumas we have. And when you do in, in a group, you can raise your vibrations when you do the meditations together. That's why the meditations are so important to raise your vibrations. We need to raise our vibrations. It's very important that we start doing this. 
and do it in a group that you can help each other. Sorry. Okay, I want to share my screen. Uh, so someone, yeah, uh, Harold Kautzvela. Kaltz, so yeah, this, that's yeah, one. I from Basis from Series. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so check him out. All right, and but now let's go into the black cube. Is I think you also said it was a black cu cube technology. Yeah, that's that in the technology we use very often, and it is used on me very often. To start with, it was used with me in the in the spiritual group in Germany, where I worked and lived for a certain time. So that's where they uh, in these rituals. Well, they have more consciousness than we. Uh, let's say more intelligence than we have. We only have one percent. We have the complete powers. So they can take away from our consciousness the. And, frequency like and then they put it in this little black uh, cubes or boxes and then they store them away for the sole person for the sole reason that you never ever ever as a person can gain access to your own parts of your own consciousness well we found them and I did this exercises already before I started working with uh, this nice guy who helped me through all this trauma. And uh, I was just doing an exercise. And I was just wondering what happened in that time. So I, I do the meditation and I align with my uh, full family and they helped me to see the memories. And then I see all these black things. And then I said, uh -uh, come back to me. And I don't know where they stored them, but they all came back and they started swirling around me. And then I said, okay, now stop. Now must the contents of my consciousness come back to my mind here in this head. And this just happened like a frequency and it just felt very normal, felt not difficult at all. So that was one part. And the other part helped was during this abductions and this rituals, satanic rituals. And this happens very often. And they put my mind in this uh, black uh, boxes, black cubes, and they are so mean, uh, they are evil. They stored it away on different planets. And then I started working a few years ago with this very, very psychic person who helped me a great deal in remembering things also, apart from from Toes and Casper, he, he did a great, they do a great work, but they don't live in Holland anymore. And this other nice man, he has uh, so much work, he couldn't help me on this plane. He helps me on the spiritual plane all the time, but not on the physical, he couldn't. And he was getting ill himself and you know what happens to people. Well, anyhow, this, this other person, this woman, she's very psychic and she said, all your consciousness is put in boxes and black cubes and then we start doing in the meditation and there's also some other persons around who join us in the meditation and our spirit family is around so we were traveling to all the planets and they were stored away in towers and in caves and in laboratory laboratorium and in bibliotheques and everywhere so we had to this was a big 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 work we had to do that took lots and lots and lots of time but we found them and um, and then we uh, sat when it was here the conscious back to me and it also all the time happens very easily but what they also do the nazis and all these evil ones they put a very big big black cube around the house where i live now so that uh, this house has a very bad, bad feeling and it was easy access for burglars and easy access for people who wanted to rape me again. And it was easy access for stealing my things and it was easy access for destroying my computers and everything, everything broke, everything broke all the time. And it was very easy for destroying friendships and relations. And that was this black cube that was around this house. So we 
that away also. And the other things that they do with the nanos and the implants, and this one was the, well, lots of them, all kinds, all shapes, and I must found my notes. When I found my notes, I will send them to you. But this one was very evil. They put uh, nanos that was made from big spiders beds. Uh, it was all black and it was on the nano level. And they made uh, like when, when they do the netting, yeah, you know, the, the wool. <laughs> they made the nanos like wool, uh, very little. And every cell of my body, around every cell of my body, and around in every intercellular space. So they were everywhere. And I still feel shaky. Oh, it was so evil. And uh, this was done by uh, big, big uh, spiders that live in another dimension in Australia, on this planet. And it was together with big, big uh, ants. And they were three meters high. They were also in Australia. So, so you planet. you remember being in a laboratory with giant spiders and ants that were experimenting on you? Uh, no, I've seen them in Australia, uh, Australia, making the uh, implants for me. Because that that does seem very uh, characteristic of something that would take place at an umbrella labs. Do you recall seeing uh, white lab coats with the uh, umbrella symbol on them? Do you know the the umbra umbrella symbol looks like? Uh, yeah, I've been reading about it. I've not seen the symbol, but I have seen this big uh, big ants and this big spiders. And uh, about the spiders, I have a lot of other stories. Because they what? were also inserted in my mouth, and then they grew in my stomach. So I had stabbed with spiders in my stomach. Uh, were they uh, like uh, scientists that that would look spider-like? Uh, I don't know. Hmm. I don't were, there, know. were there reptilians in the same facility and humans? Yeah, what I remember all the time when I was something somewhere, it was also always, always. That is my what I remember. It were all always the Nazis and the reptilians and other races uh, around. Yeah, and well, um, Umbrella Nazis. subcontracts, they subcontract with the Nazis. I've, I've got an altar, um, a cyborg altar uh, by the name of Malcolm that works for, that was created by the Third Reich and is used by Umbrella. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, uh, uh, do, do you recall cybernetics as well? Well, I guess, I mean, that would be what the black goo is. A, a form of, so they were trying to cybernate you in a way, or, or maybe trying to control your, your abilities they um, have they all the time they could try to control me that i remember but they weren't necessarily trying to convert you into a, a cyborg like for me it would be like a super soldier aspect for you it was just to just to try to control harness those i don't abilities. know i i will I, I will do more i i think i did more regressions to see that uh, that uh, question because you know what happened to me that is the sort of accident coincidences that are not coincidences so somehow i came to your side i don't know why i can't remember blank slate no gone but then i started uh, reading and uh, following the youtube she put on your side and i was thinking oh my gosh i remember so much of that i thought this was so happening so Perhaps I've been a part of that in, in one of the altar. That can be possible. I don't know. Okay, well, we'll we'll say that for another time. Uh, so let's let's move on. Unless you, I think you pretty much covered the, the lab there, um, the what lab work and the goo, the black cube. Uh, so oh oh okay. Um, do you happen to have any information on like what percentage of your soul? Because if the if if the, your soul was stored in the black cube, they uh, they usually allow what they do is they splinter it out into different clone bodies. Like for me, it would be like 2.8% of my soul is in this body and the rest is all a bunch of other clone bodies that the, uh, the alpha draconis got a hold of my soul and is, and is keeping it um, in this, they, they put it in, in this cylinder that has like this, this green gas. They kill. I was a crystalline being. They killed me. 
and now there's the fr- fragment off my soul. So I'm not necessarily saying that that's what happened to you, but um, do you happen to have any information on like what percentage soul is in your body or, um, and the, the way you could, um, if you don't have the, the, know the number, um, one of the symptoms or side effects um, is chronic fatigue. Uh, so, cause typically, yeah, they drain you through the other bodies. Do you, do you have, do you have symptoms of that fatigue issues? Chronic fatigue. Or the fatigue. Yeah. I have chronic fatigue, but I always thought yeah. it was because of the accidents. Yeah. They're constantly draining you. That's, that's one of the things that they're like a bunch of parasites. Well, you know what? Um, let's just. Now they are parasites. That's but, really yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, um, eventually uh, we'll hopefully get this med bed tech. We'll get integrated. But in the meantime, we'll, we're doing the best we can here. Um, so you're doing a good uh, job, Trudy. Um, you, yeah, uh, thank may you. I tell you something about sure. something Go ahead. I learned in this group. And then, then we can end with that perhaps. Oh, about the black cubes. They use the symbols all the time. Look around. The black cubes are now as art and as oh beautiful but this is also to get the minds of the people uh, trained to accept that black cubes are uh, the way of controlling the minds and what they also can do in the black cubes is put whole dimensions in it put whole universes in it and they can put the minds in it and you see the black cubes everywhere you see it in music you see it in, in art, you see it on the, on the, the app, apparata we use, the things we use. Right? That is also with black boxes. And we have these, these black boxes. And, and also, art. yeah, and also Muslims, they, uh, they, they make a, a pilgrimage to Mecca to yeah. touch the black cube. And, and that thing is infected with black goo. So, so that whole that's religion that's is basically a huge uh, um, yeah. uh, uh, high uh, mind. In, in the Roman church, the, they have this altar and they have this white cloth on it, but some of them are black, uh, black cubes in some churches. And so they want people to touch it? That's, that's the goal, to touch no, it? No, I think like in, in the Roman church, they use it for slaughter the children in some Roman churches. Oh. Okay. That is what I think. That is what the, uh, David Wilcock also is telling uh, somewhere in one of, uh, a few years ago. He's telling about this. And then I go to, uh, to the, well, I've been in lots of spiritual groups and we are doing exercises on, on a ch- some church somewhere. And I say, oh, I see this big black uh, thing. And that was also affirmed. This it happens. And the black things are everywhere, the black cubes. And they are especially a very lot in the films, in the movies, in the, in the, in the music, in the art, everywhere. And it is just also a symbol for, from controlling us. Hmm. Okay, so... Mind control. Yeah. Well, let's move on here next, to the next question, unless you... I mean... Did, no, did no, you I continue. Question? I feel fine. Okay. Swing my right. eyes a bit because the light is getting a bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well. Okay. It's um, okay. You can continue as long as people have questions. I stay yeah. here. I, 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 I'm here for that. Okay. Can you tell us about your views of consciousness and life? And I think you've already done it. Consciousness and life on other planets. Was it? Was there anything else specifically you wanted to mention about um, life on other planets? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That is great. Um. um we have also cleaning technologies and we use the consciousness also for making uh, light forces to make create extra light in a physical form and to send it to planets where people need help so that can, they can access to more light on planets that we do. Uh, I remember me doing that. I remember very clearly. And um, well, I have been, uh, we do also uh, lots of meetings, like how do we continue what's happening on planets? How can we help people? 
And I remember I have been in this large, very large Andromedan ship, spaceship, and it is more like Earth. And it has this shape. It is not like that, or not the saucer one, but it has this shape of uh, like that, conies. And this was open, and this was open, and it was this uh, like an arena, and it was filled with all races from all the universe. And there was this uh, play in floating, <laughs> this place where you could talk. It's so a uh, platform where you could talk. And then uh, people from all planets stand there to talk about their problems and say that is happening on our planet and this is happening here and we have this problem and we have this problem. And then this whole group of all these star nations uh, make plans how, how they can help these planets and these people. So that is also from the alliances of the good forces, of the very consciousness, good willing, heart, uh, mind, persons, people. And not all of them are human like we are. Huh? Many are human like, have different shapes and forms like we have in the head, but they are very good in the heart and very full of consciousness. Now, I, I remember in another Andromedan ship, I was there for meeting people also, <laughs> and then they take me um, to a corridor that was uh, filled with music and colors, and the bottom of it felt like walking on moss, you know, very soft and very lively. I felt the ship was very lively itself. And then we walked there and the music was a bit like solfege. Do you know that one, the nearly tonal sounds and a very beautiful, very warm sounding. And the colors were just bright, all colors that sparkling and you can't imagine how the colors are. And when we were at the end of this corridor, my body was cleaned inside the cells. And the traumas, the memories, they were for that moment gone, as long as I stayed on the ship. And I was totally clean from viruses, bacteria, from illnesses. Uh, I can see with, uh, without the glasses then. <laughs> Come now. <laughs> and uh, so. And this was a beautiful experience. This is some, also some space technology that is later on is going to help people. I know for sure. So we need the help and it is coming, really. I, this is really coming. There's so many people helping now. There are so many star forces. I call them star family, my family. <laughs> I always talk about my family, my star family. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Trudy. Why don't you talk a little bit about your healing eco lodge? So, so that's what I, I guess that's one of your plans in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to make a place where people can come, and I want it all uh, with a special wood. I've uh, learned that when I lived in uh, Austria, not Australia, but I lived in Austria one year in my life, and you have the special wood that is uh, neutral and they plant it biological. And it is in such a way that it is against the radiations of the 4G, the 5G, the apparat, uh, anything. And it is breathing very well. And it is helping curing the body out from viruses. And, and uh, it's helping curing the body from stress. It is a very relaxing feeling as it is the life of the wood, of the, in fact, it is the, spirits of the of the trees and they are helping there and uh, it will be like that i won't have a ma i will have a main building where you have the necessary things like the the kitchen professional and a place to eat and it will be vegan food of course this and we will grow our plants ourselves and then there will be the lectures and there will be the creative places and there will be this nice lounge where you can sit and just the books and, and reading and talking to people drinking tea 
and on the second floor there will be the rooms for the specialist therapists who can listen, who can help with the energetic healings like um, Hive, uh, Hilda, Clark, or uh, the other one, I forget. The, the quantum physics uh, uh, diagnostics, the Lakowski, uh, such uh, things, and um, also do uh, body work when necessary, when somebody wants. And I want to have a crystal chamber. So it doesn't have to be a big one, but I want to have a crystal chamber with the rosa parts, helping heal the feelings. I've been in such a run when I was working in the spiritual group in Germany, and I was sitting there 10 minutes inside, and you feel so, oh, all the stress is falling off your body. And that's also in the, in the, the char, the Tsars had them, and the Russians had them. Russia, they had this uh, chambers with the crystals. And I want to have the infrared sauna, and I want to have a swim, swimming pool with the ozone and the magnesium for healing the body. And um, I want to have all these kinds of things. And then I want to have the people, and uh, it is nearly three plants, it is also elderly people who search a place where they can live the rest of the life and be sure there is when needed medical personnel and so that they can help. And it is also the plan for um, people who just want to have a month or two for relaxation, for restoring the body, get out of the stress. Perhaps you put a whole of that there also, hey, James, would be good. Huh? <laughs> Love that. Well, there's going to be a lot of need for healing in the future. Once once the med beds come up, uh, I mean, te te I mean, theoretically, yeah, it, it'd be like... It's great. It is great. And I want also a special place for people who were living through the traumas. That as professionals, you don't need to do much. But please listen. Please listen. You know, that is so important. People, you know, when I was searching for help, I was phoning all the therapists in Holland, and they all run away, yeah? When you say it is about satanic rituals, nobody wants to help. Yeah, there was one person, but she lives in the north of Holland. I can't, I couldn't go there. So, but there's nobody. They all run away, yeah? So that is very important that the trauma get healed. The traumas must be healed. And that they can find a place and that you can integrate it in your life and start say, okay, I'm here, I survive, and now I do what I can to help humanity and help the earth and help the animals and the plants and anything that is necessary. That's what okay. I Thank you, Trudy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, well, we'll be looking forward to all that when it happens. Uh, I'm assuming probably the RV or Nasara or some scenario when they're finally going to release a bunch of money. So yeah, I need some money too. Happen. I have nothing. <laughs> but yeah. perhaps, you know. Well, okay. But we all, I think we all kind of sense that that's all about to change. Uh, the question is when. Um, no, but there are still good people who even without the Sahara, but we don't know when that is happening. But even now, you have people who say, oh, I'm so rich, I will have to help people. I will invest in a good plan and help that there is something that we can start. Well, now life is new. We must do away of about everything we have learned. Schools are bad. Medicine is bad. Politics are bad. They are all bad. Everything we have is bad. And the technology, how it is used now, is bad. And the 4G, 5G, and the, and the smart, and anything that's just simply bad. So we must find a way when we can restart again from our inner heart feeling connected to each other and so that everybody can do what he or she can do and that is so much that needs to be done but we must re make definitions again about how we want life and it's not like it is now that is no good at all i need some other Okay. Well, so I'm there. I'm, I'm at the end of the list of the questions that we came up with, but uh, I do have at least one more question on my list. And there's, there are some okay. 
questions in the chat, but I just want to ask you, are, are you, are you exhausted? Do you want to call it a night? No, 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 no. We just continue with the questions okay. now. Because okay. I feel this is the, the fight we are in now. We are now, yeah. so I only, I take some more water. Yeah. That's the one thing. Okay. Yeah. Well, while, while Trudy's grab, I'm going to take a quick break there. I guess I can go to some of these questions. Uh, someone mentioned about Ashtar Galactic Command. Well, we yeah. were actually picking up about the, um, just this recently, I, I was, um, Ashtar apparently is a benevolent being, but in this reality, he was taken over by a clone, um, some kind of hybrid created by the reptilians, a cyborg. Mm -hmm. um, I can't confirm any of that, uh, so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to just, I don't, I don't know, Trudy, is, is that even a question? <laughs> Do you want to comment about Ashtar? Yeah, I met him also. He's a nice man. And he's, he's doing, uh, we, we were working with him also, with Ashtar Command. And I still like them very much. But um, they are connected to the artificial intelligence probes. And they are also searching for the part of the consciousness. And I think one time we will all meet and we will all get uh, this uh, working together from all different probes. Because this is one thing you must never forget. Uh, all, although it is difficult, but if we don't learn to forgive and say that happened, and it is not good, and it must stop, because it must stop, it never can change. Because if you kill somebody, the spirit is alive and continues somewhere else. That is of no use. And I have seen myself one day when I was, when I was doing the meditation that uh, people were coming from different popes from my uh, star family, but also from uh, draconian popes and reptilian popes. And we were talking together and how do we continue? This were not the bad reptilians nor the bad draconian. They were the ones who were, were wanting to help. And so that is what I think. But someday, and it can be long off, we have a lot of work to do, but someday all nations of the cosmos will get again in friendly uh, relations together. And I think one day the black moon will be healed, it will be gone, the negative one. I think that can be gone somehow. I don't know how, but I think this will. Okay. Yeah. Well, do you have any information about royals and um, the royals that you con uh, were interacting with? Did you ever see them shapeshift into reptilians? Yeah, one of them. Do you want to talk a little bit more about it or just, no. okay. No, that is too awful. And no. Okay. I feel it on my reaction of my body. This is really awful. I, will not okay. I already think that what I told is really awful. Okay. Yeah. All right then. Uh, so we'll move on. Um, um, seeing a lot of great comments in here from the audience members. Yeah. Um, so I'm just looking for some good questions. Um, let's see here. Someone was mentioning, um, Sergeant Patty Broussard says Ashtar is a vampire. No, I don't go that far to say that, but I don't know. Uh, let's see here. I've not seen it like that. Okay. Uh, Johan Fritz explained the history of SSP video and James Rink Alliance is comprised of two major camps. Uh, Earth Alliance and Space Alliance. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Um, let's go on here. We got James and Trudy. Do you know or see evil ones being taken off planet to prisons? I mean, the ones not executed already. What do you think? It's only a matter of time for these, these, these uh, evil ones. Well, I think that what will happen perhaps as this universe is so big and there are so many planets and not all of them are inhabited by people or human life forms or other life forms, 
there's still many planets where there is nobody. I can imagine, and I have heard this with this part, <laughs> that the really evil forces will be asked to go to a different planets and live their way of living until they see for themselves that they can change the habits. And this will be uh, a very um, kind way of dealing this evil forces, I think. So not to accuse them, not to uh, kill them or anything. Okay, thank you, Trudy. All right, well, I think we're going to go ahead and leave it at that. Some people are making some weird comment. I'm going to, you know what, that's... Um, if we don't have any good more questions in here, we're going to go ahead and conclude this. So um, um, audience members, um, go ahead and subscribe, subscribe, sorry, to the, this video. And uh, well, I'm not even sure if I should leave this on YouTube or not. Um, I don't know. No, but, uh, about weird comments, let me say one thing. Yes. I can imagine that people think, oh, this is so crazy. But you never hear anything about it. You know, it is all hidden. It is all kept uh, secret. And even the Ifu sightings. I so can you see this book? Oh, uh, the invasion of Earth. So, what? Yeah. So tell us about that. What? What's? What do you uh, want to know? Uh, in fact, can you see the title, Boot? Uh, it's kind of blurry. You might need to bring a little bit. You know, even if oh, you're right closer. Is that okay, better? UFO extraterrestrial contact. Some thought the end of the world had come. Extended version. So what? Mm -hmm. Chase. Well, he's a, a ranking military man. And that, that's why this book is so important. Because all those people who see UFOs from from beginning of humanity, uh, you see these grottos everywhere. And especially soon after World War II in the 1950s. There were just huge UFO spottings everywhere, and it still continues everywhere. And all those people who tell about them, uh, they are regarded as crazy by the others, you know, who have never seen it, who don't know anything about it. And this man, uh, this man, John Scott Chase, he is a high ranking military, and he's got. Lots and lots of files. Oh. Yes. Oh, I can't see you anymore. Uh oh. Really? No, no I can't. No, then we talk like that. No problem. Um. Uh, my video stopped working. Yeah, mine. Yeah, I didn't don't see you anymore. I I, I don't do anything with the uh -oh. changing because that goes wrong. It doesn't matter. You just continue uh, a bit like. Did it like work? That. No Is problem. it working now? I don't know, um, okay. but anyhow, this man, he documented all the uh, UFO spottings from many countries and he made comments to it and that the high ranking military is in the know. And it is important that people buy this book so that you can see this is really happening and it is true because humanity is kept in darkness. Humanity is light upon. The evil forces who control this world, they just only lie, they cheat, they steal, they rob you, they make wars, they make famine, you know, and they make poverty and anything. And they just keep the, the, true, the true existence of other planets, they keep secret because they just don't want to know. They just don't want us to know. You know one thing, uh, James, the moment, people start to see in themselves, in the heart mind, their own true consciousness, who they really are. Do you think that ever these forces can, uh, can stay in control? Of course not. That's why they made COVID, to control us, because so many people are awakening up. And that's why. And you don't hear it at school. You don't hear it at work. It is not on the television. Then, well, you have Star Trek, but everybody thinks this is just science fiction. No, it is not fiction. It is true. And uh, it is with all those kinds of things 
And that's why I think it's important we have these kinds of books to just say, ah, this is documented by a high ranking military person and it is just true what is happening. And all pe persons who think, uh, make weird comments, please do. It is just because the minds of people get blocked when something is said or told or shown that is not normal on TV. And that's the reason. That's why we, people do that. It is hard to imagine. We only have this one percentage of consciousness left. We can't see other dimensions. We can't see the evil ones. We can't see spirits. We can't see them. We can't see frequency bands. We can't see them. And most people can't see UFOs. They can't see it. And, and, and because everything is kept secret, we think that the mainstream media is telling the truth and then you accept what they tell. And you think everybody who's outside of the box is strange. Ah, that's how it is. So that's quite normal that people react mm -hmm. that way. So I, I, I do not offend nobody ever, never, ever. Okay, thank you, Trudy. All right, so um, yeah, audience members, um, yeah, like I said before, be sure to subscribe. Uh, check out our website, supersoldiertalk.com. Eventually, I'll get uh, a way to put your, you can put your email address in there. We can, if I ever do get this channel, if this channel ever does get banned on um, YouTube, you'll be, be able to find us. Um, I know I needed to do that as, as soon as possible. Uh, you can make a donation. Um, I'm trying to get the website updated on that. Uh, uh, PayPal, uh, another PayPal account that I had for um, Neological Tech got frozen uh, this week. So the money, I, yeah, so I'm, I'm working on trying to situate, fix this situation. Wow. And also, uh, be sure to check out, uh, contact um, Trudy at Golden quantum universe at protonmail.com i'll put the link to all that stuff in the description as soon as we get done with this and i think i'll just go ahead and leave the video up and see what happens i think oh. we'll we'll see um you know as long as we're not talking about the coco virus too much or <laughs> or uh, uh yeah, yeah. or so yeah, like, not okay. allowed sorry that I'm or the 17, yeah, sorry. 17. <laughs> okay then well thanks everybody uh, thank you trudy and some yeah. some of the comment they wanted to come back on here again let's let's try to get you some some of your recall and then and then uh yeah, then we can, uh, we'll do a part two i'll uh, follow up when you're ready uh, let's do that well james uh, thank you too and thank for all the people who take the time and the intention at least to want to see and listen because that is great and you have no idea how great this is that you even want to take time to listen to some out of the box for most people weird stories and that you are open at least to listen and this is great it is really great that people are doing that and that we can share information so i will say i love you all and thank you so much james see you next time Thank you, Trudy. Thank you, um, audience members. We'll see you all later. Bye.